Garth, when you play uh, either the accordion, the organ, the piano, we often hear old songs that we sort of vaguely knew, knew sometime popping up in your playing. Is that deliberately done by you to intrigue us? Um, no, that's uh, right out of the book. All those are out of the book. Uh, now, where is that book? Uh, uh, I put it up here. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> Canada <laughs> sings. Yeah. That's your it, has, it has a lot of songs. Here, I'll, I'll name some of them here. Long, long ago. Bring back my Bonnie, the lonesome road. And here we go again. Silver threads among the gold. My old Kentucky home, Stephen Foster. Okay. Uh, That's the kind of stuff that. Yeah. Uh, when you started uh, introducing all these uh, small snatches of songs into what you played with the band, did the people catch on to what you were doing? Did, did the audience understand where you were taking it from? No, I don't think so. This is... See, I'm not over there now. This is... I'm hoping this won't get, get back to them, and uh, so... It, we'll just keep it a secret here. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> no, I never did <clears throat> talk about it that much. Uh, I knew some of the songs. Uh, I knew some of the Stephen Foster tunes, but I actually deliberately did go back and look for these old books like uh, like this one here. Mm. Uh, and my dad kept a few of them, and I've got more of them, uh, hymn books and community sing type of books, you know, that uh, would have songs that I'd forgotten. Uh, as well as reading through the hymn book, I'd read through these uh, community sing books mm. too. It's interesting uh, because when you're talking to um, to artists about this concept of the roots of their music, the background, you often have them talking about having listened to all the old blues singers, and they'll be talking about the folk singers and Woody Guthrie's and so forth. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're giving us quite a different angle on this. Well, we're introducing little snatches or what do we call them? Fragments. Fragments of tunes that are familiar but maybe not that well known. They're part of American Canadian history and, of course, came from over here. A lot of the <coughs> basic. Um, Melody things. A lot. A lot of it came from uh, uh, England, Ireland, and Scotland. But um, I'm just putting these melodies in here and there uh, as part of a, you know, a style. Thank you. 
My mother had a, an accordion that looks much like this, real nice one, which they traded in later for a big black man size uh, accordion that didn't sound quite as nice. Uh, I wish I had that old accordion. My dad had a C melody saxophone. And uh, so I picked up on those two instruments as well as piano. I'd started taking piano lessons much, much earlier, I guess I was seven. Well, I, I heard uh, and could understand, I think, uh, a little bit Dixieland, what my dad called Dixieland music. I remember on the radio we heard this New Orleans style band. He said, that's Dixieland. So here I am, 1951, 52, I was about 10, 11 years old listening to this stuff. I didn't like the bebop thing at first and all that, so I'd, I'd listen to the other part because I figured I could someday play like that. So <laughs> I wanted to play the accordion. So, so we're getting to the immediately now to the problem area in the whole discussion, and that's the bass buttons. You know, I mean, it's got to be a mystery to everybody. There have to be some mysteries. Well, there's, there are bass notes, and then chords, major, minor, seventh, and diminished. So you could just go like that, and you got your rhythm going, you could, it's a lot easier than, than doing this. So one instrument helps you discover a new way of playing another instrument. Oh, it's definitely uh, the accordion's got the upper hand here. Thank you. 